What's going on everyone? It's Mark Sellis back with another video. We got to go over baby does today. As you can see, we're starting to do some of a pump here. So we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about what could happen next with the prices of baby doge. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an assist financial advice. If you want these automated trading indicators, definitely check out the vital algo link in the description. Use the discount code Marcellus for 25% off. Definitely hit the like button and subscribe because it really helps the YouTube channel out immensely for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to help support the channel, definitely go ahead and send a donation through the Cash App or PayPal donation link in the description. Now, let's get straight over Baby Doge. So the first thing I want to talk about here is we didn't quite hit the support that I was predicting. We didn't quite hit that support all the way down there. So pretty much what you can see here with Baby Doge, we hit about three, three, four, like mid three, fours. We didn't actually hit the three, two area, which isn't that bad. You know, we are only 0.2 away from it, but we didn't hit the actual three, two areas. So we hit three, four, but now the bulls are back in control by the 24 hour market control by 80%. So it's pretty much showing that we're 80% of bullish here again. So we do see over here on the oscillator that we have a lot of buying volume coming back in for baby doge. You see that it got a little bit smaller around this area when we we're trading sideways, but now we're starting to rise on there again. So we passed this resistance here of 3.8 and now we're at the 4032 area. So now what you're going to see next is either this area here. So look, we have supply and demand areas, right? So 3.8 being our resistance here, 3850 really. But the red areas are supply and demand of less demand. The green areas are supply and demand of more demand. So look at where Baby Doge is right now. Remember, this is just short-term technicals. I'll do a long-term technical right after this. But what we got going on for the short term here. Right now, we are getting rejected here at this area here. And pretty much this right here is the supply and demand of less demand, which is where we're getting rejected at. The 4-0 area, it's really hard for us to pass 4-0. That's our resistance. Right now, we're seeing some supply and demand there. Of less demand so we're at four zero zero nine right now so right now what you'll see is baby doge maybe trending back down to this area here where we also have a little bit less demand which is three nine five seven or three nine five zero and if we break that then you'll see baby doge go down to this area which is pretty much the 3850 area but we have a green area of more demand over here so since we have a more demand area over here that means that when we do hit the 3a area if we hit the 3a area we're going to go back up on an uptrend because we have more demand. So that's going to send baby dogs here. And then we'll more than likely pass that four zero area if we continue to pump. That's an if. So over here, the next area of supply and demand of less demand is over here at the four one area. So if baby doge breaks past four zero after we retest three eight, then you will see it eventually hit this area. And we may have some resistance here showing us pulling back to four zero before we go on our next pump. So where does the next pump bring baby doge? So pretty much where I'm seeing the next pump bringing baby doge, let me move this up so we can see this. The next pump would bring baby doge all the way up here to the 4.3 area or really the 4.4 area, 4.450, somewhere around there because that's pretty much where our next area of supply and demand of less demand is, pretty much where our resistance is going to be. So this area here is going to be our next resistance. So 4.5, 4.450, somewhere around there. You'll see Baby Doge try to retest that area. Now, I know I have a lot of stuff drawn here, but um, let's take off everything that I just now drew, drew and let's look at what I drew yesterday. So yesterday, I pretty much was saying that Baby Doge is going to do this pullback. We're going to do the pullback to 3-2. We ended up only going at a 3-4. So anyways, you can actually see down here, I was saying that if we continue to pull back, then you'll see Baby Doge pull up all the way back here from the 3-2 area, pretty much to the 2-8 area, the 2-9 area. And then eventually down to 2.4 if we kept pulling back. But we did not keep on pulling back, which is very good right now. And I'm definitely happy to see it. I missed I missed the opportunity to buy Baby Doge at 3.4 because I was at work. So I wasn't even able to buy it. But it's all good. I mean, I'll try to get back in. Or not back in because I still have Baby Doge. But I mean, I'll try to get the dip like sooner or later. But um, anyways, I want to take off all this stuff here. So then we can look at the next next area for baby doge to go off so the bullish trajectory that i pretty much said that we could go on was pretty much from here all the way from three two and then pumping all the way up here it's all about four three getting rejected trying to retest that area as you can see we're slowly but surely pumping to four three we're at three nine nine five four zero so we could actually end up pumping there and what you'll see if we hit four three you'll probably hit a little bit of a pullback back down to three eight and have another rise in price action here so there's a lot of different scenarios for baby doge and I think the more likely one that could happen could be bullish. Now, this whole thing could be a bear trap. It could be, or a bull trap, I mean. So as you can see, Bitcoin and everything's going crazy. Bitcoin up 11.3% for the day. 
So over here, you can see Baby Doge up 8.5% for the day. And then actually, when you look at all Bitcoin's rise in price, like it's, it was just a huge rise in price. Like so many people are starting to buy in on Bitcoin and crypto in general. Money just started to flow back into Bitcoin. Bitcoin's dominance is now back at 40%. So Bitcoin is still dominant over everything right now. But as you can see, that huge spike here. So this could easily be a bull trap. This has happened so many times, multiple times inside of this crash that we've had. Like we've just been seeing Bitcoin pulling back, but then pumping immediately. And it just keeps happening over and over again, literally. We go down, Bitcoin pumps, pumps, pumps. We go down some more, pump, 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 and down some more. And actually, if you look over here, January 24th, we we really hit like 33,000, almost 32,000. But that this may be the bottom because remember, last time we had a whole crash and pullback inside of Bitcoin was way back here inside of uh, July 21st, somewhere around there. Yeah, July 21st. But you can see Bitcoin pulled all the way back down to 29K. That was the last time we've seen below 30K of Bitcoin back in July 21st of last year. So it's almost a full year from now. But see, when this happens, our lows become higher and our highs become higher. So if you look at the chart here for Bitcoin, you can see the, the peak The peak over here was about 62K on April 14th, 2021. But then the next time we came around, we got all the way up to like 67 or 69K. So pretty much we're getting higher highs and lower lows. You can see that the low here was about 28K, 29K, somewhere around there. But now, and when I said here, I mean like around the 21st of July. And now you can see our new low is pretty much around 33K. So this could be the bottom. I hope it is the bottom because if this is the bottom, then this is going to be really good for us. It's just going to be really good news for the whole crypto market. And Baby Doge has already been pumping while everything else is going down. So this is going to be like a double positive for Baby Doge. So this could really help us if Bitcoin does this. But yeah, anyways, we're doing pretty good inside Baby Doge. I just want to see some more volume. I want to see some more buying of the dips here with Baby Doge. I was trying to delete all this stuff. So then I don't have all this mess on the screen. So I'm just trying to delete some of it, but not all of it, because I know it probably gets really hard and really messy to see all this stuff here. But uh, anyways, I wanted to show something else, another scenario that could happen with Baby Doge. So I know I mentioned all the bullish stuff, but let's just say this is a, bull, a bear trap. So if this was a bear trap with Baby Doge, you would pretty much see Baby Doge take a huge dip all the way down to the 3-2 area. And it would probably just invalidate this whole area right here. This whole support would probably immediately get broken down because it's such a small area of more demand. You can even see it like this green area is very lightly shaded. It's very small. It's not much demand right there. So if this was a bull trap, you would see Baby Doge immediately, almost immediately go all the way down to 3 too because remember over here this was around the three four area so if baby doge just crashes right now you'll pretty much see it go below way below the three four to the three two area now i don't believe it's gonna just crash like that because the baby doge army is so strong i i I, don't, I just don't see it crashing like that now i did mention that i'll show the long-term trajectories here for baby doge so we're gonna look at the four hour chart now so this is the four hour chart here with baby doge it's kind of easier when you're looking at the four hour chart because it gives you a better perspective because, you know, we're all long term holders here. Like I said, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but predominantly we're long term holders for this. So let's talk about this now. So the first thing that you want to go ahead and look at with Baby Doge, not that I don't know why I just now pulled that up. Let me uh, back up from here. So, yeah, I just now accidentally clicked that. Let me close that down. All right. So the first thing that I want to go over here with Baby Doge, let's click the auto so make sure this can like. All right, there we go. So look at the charts that we have right now. So right now we're struggling staying above 3.8. Right now we're at 4.0. But when we look at the long-term projections for Baby Doge, we have a lot going on inside the technicals. Like when you look at it, this green area here, very lightly shaded, but it's supply and demand of more demand. This shows more demand in the area from 3.4 all the way down to about 3.0. We have more demand. Then after that, we have this area here of more demand. So this area is from 2.7 all the way up until 2.9. So look at these areas as our supports. We have another one down here, 2.4. These are all levels that I've mentioned in previous videos. They're all significant levels. And then when you look at it from the long-term perspective, you see that these levels, they're not like just some fake levels. They're actually support lines 
that we actually have created. And then when you look back here, there still was more demand for Baby Doge way back here at the 1.3 area, 1.5 area. There's a lot of demand for Baby Doge. So any of these areas get hit, we're going to immediately go on a rise in price action, which is pretty much why I don't believe Baby Doge is going below that 2.0 area. Remember, and now when I say 8Z2, that means eight zeros and a two. So the 8Z2 area, we are I don't believe we'll go down that low because if we do, everyone's buying that dip and we're getting rich. So let's look at the long term perspective from here, though. So as you can see, we had some consolidation here. We already had our all time high up here and we have some less demand at that all time high area. But as you can see, the consolidation, we broke out on a negative downtrend with the consolidation. So usually when we break out on negative downtrends with consolidation, we usually end up trading sideways for a little while. And as you can see, we have been going down, but for the next few days, I think Baby Doge may actually prepare for this pump by trading sideways around the 4.0. Anywhere from about 3.8 all the way to about 4.4. That's where I'm predicting Baby Doge to you know kind of be around for the next few days. Now, if Bitcoin continues to rise and Bitcoin continues to pump, then obviously that will all be validated because then we'll pump with Bitcoin. But until then, we're going to see Baby Doge trading between this 4.4 area and this 3.2 area. These areas are our supply and demand areas. There's lots of demand, lots of supply in these areas, lots of people doing lots of trade between these areas. So we could see something big happening for Baby Doge soon. Now, zooming out on the chart here, look at what happened pre previously. Last time, we had our huge pump, and then we dropped, and then we traded sideways for a little bit. And now let me take off these because all of those indicators are making it hard to see. So look, we pumped, we went down on a downtrend, and then we traded sideways for a while, hit our support. That was our bottom. And then we started the pump again. Now we're on that downtrend. Like I said, trade sideways for a little while. And if the market, if this is a bull trap, remember, I said this could be a bull trap. If this is a bull trap, look at where we're at now with Baby Doge. So I just want to take kind of everything off of right now. So... Let me just take off all, actually, no, I'm going to leave that so that I can be like, yeah, I predicted all those pumps. But anyways, look over here. You can see how Baby Doge pumped and then it went down and then it traded sideways just briefly for a little. It tried to break out, but then immediately, boom, immediately it went down and it hit the support, this bottom. And now we're kind of seeing the same thing is happening again. So Baby Doge hit a pump, boom, went there sideways, and then it might actually go down to another bottom, the new bottom being 2.4. This is why the 2-4 area is so significant. I, I mentioned this in every single video. This was our bottom after that pump. Now, this is going to be our next bottom after this pump. This area here, this is going to be our 2-4 area. Now, we may not actually trade between the 2-4, 3-2 area for long, but it didn't even trade for long back here either. Remember, when we pumped from November 30th all the way to about December 30th, about a full month, Baby Doge was trading sideways. So... If this is a bull trap, expect Baby Doge to trade sideways. And you're probably wondering, why am I giving you all these different scenarios? Because no one can 100% predict what's going to happen. But we do know it has to be one of these scenarios. Now, if we're just going by what happened previously in Baby Doge on October 30th, if we're just going by what happened there, you got to think about this. Like, just look at it. I mean, I don't want to just keep repeating myself, but you just have to look at this chart. If this whole thing, like this whole thing right here, if it's going to be the same scenario, look at the part point where we're at now. So this area that we're at right now is equivalent to this area when we pumped previously. What does that mean? That means that we quite possibly could be going back down to our new bottom being the 2-4 area. Now, that's if we follow that same pattern back here to a T. If we follow it completely, we're going to see Baby Doge bottom out around 2.4, trade sideways for a little while before the next pump. If this is a bull trap, and that's a big if, if this is a bull trap, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see some more pullbacks. So um, I've mentioned the 2.4 support in a lot of videos for a reason, because I've been watching the long-term technicals and I've been watching the short terms. And when you look at it, we're following that same path. So just to kind of show you everything inside of a better review, let's delete all this. Now look at it. It looks exactly the same. This area here is exactly the same as this area here. And what happened after this area? It went on a downtrend and bottomed out. And what happens after this area? Goes on a downtrend and bottoms out. Goes down by two levels. Two levels here. Bottoms out. Goes down by one and two levels. And bottoms out. 
So 2.4 would technically be that support, the complete bottom support. So don't expect Baby Doge to go below 2.4, but if this is a bull trap, expect it to go to 2.4 and then trade sideways for a good month or so. Now, that's just, just you know, the technicals there. You know, we're just going by what is showing on these charts. If we were to do exactly what we did in the past, then that is what happens. Now, you got to account for other things. You got to account for the listings that we keep having, these major listings. You got to account for the utilities that we're supposed to be getting. You got to account for the NFT marketplace. All that could be invalidated if we get our utilities out. We get our roadmap playing out. So remember, Baby Doge is also at 1 million, almost at 1 million holders. We're at 927,000 holders. Now, 1 million holders, that's just going to solidify us, or not holders, but you know, followers on Twitter. That's just going to solidify us even more. And then when you look at this whole roadmap, if we get the Baby Doge wallet, that's going to be huge. It'll invalidate the bullish th or the bearish thesis 100%. It'll invalidate the bull trap thesis, not for Bitcoin. But see, Bitcoin can do a bull trap, but then Baby Doge can continue to pump if we get a major listing or these utilities. If we can get our Baby Doge wallet, our virtual and physical debit cards, our exchange, our arcade, our NFT marketplace. If we can get any of these for Baby Doge, then we, it doesn't matter what Bitcoin does. We're still going to pump. And yeah, that's pretty much what I got for the technicals here. I just wanted to mention all those different scenarios that could happen. So like I said, the 2-4 support still stands as the bottom support. So even if we did pull back, it would only pull back to there if this was a whole bull trap. But I don't know. We could be bullish like right now. But remember, last year, April was really the year for cryptos. Like Doge, everything pumped in April. Doge, sheep, everything was going crazy in April. So it's February right now. March is next month. We may see Baby Doge pulling back for um, for March, pretty much. We may see a pump coming here inside of February, but we may see a little bit of a pullback in March. I know I said I know I said March may be big, but if we're looking at what happened last year and we're comparing it to this year, that could be the exact same thing that happens. So these are all just you know predictions. These are all just hypotheticals. What if this happens? What if that happens? This could happen if that happens. If this happens, that happens. You know, we're really just speculating at this point. That's all we really can do. No one can 100% predict the market. And like I say, I'm not a guru. None of that stuff. I did predict a lot of things that happened inside of Baby Doge. But again, I'm not a guru. I'm not some technical analysis wizard. Some, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm none of that. Even though I did predict this, I predicted that. I predicted that. And a lot of people made money off those predictions. Me as well. Like I already said turned a huge loan inside of not really a huge loan but i turned a loan into money for baby doge and now i'm just holding those profits so this is what we could do next and i'm going to be trading accordingly to this this is just what i'm doing and when i say trading i'm not selling baby doge i just mean buying the dips when i say trading like trading baby doge is pretty idiotic i mean it's a 20 percent tax total from the buy and sell so unless you're pumping 30% plus, it's really not worth it. And even at 30%, you're only making 10% profit. So it's really not worth it to trade Baby Doge unless we just have like astronomical growth and you just sell a little bit of the profits and then buy back in at a lower price. But then still, it has to go below 30 or 20% for you to even be profitable. So trading Baby Doge is just not logical. But yeah, anyways, that's all I got for the technicals. We are actually almost past 1.4 million holders. We're at 1,376,264 holders. So many different people holding Baby Doge. Shout out to the whole Baby Doge army. And I know there is a lot of duplicate wallets. People are saying all inside the comments and inside of the Baby Doge army Reddit that a lot of these are fake holders. It's not that they're fake holders. It's just there's people like me with three Baby Doge wallets. Like there's a lot of people with multiple Baby Doge wallets. Like I had a Baby Doge wallet for that loan that I pulled out. And then I had a baby doge wallet for, or I have, I have a baby doge wallet for the loan that I pulled out and all the profits are just chilling in there. Then I have a baby doge wallet where I take money from my paycheck from my day job and I put it into that wallet. And then I got another wallet with my, um, my ledger. And with that ledger, what I did, I just took one full paycheck and put it in there and I'm just leaving it in there, not putting any more into it and not going to do anything with it just letting it sit a few hundred billion is not much. But I'm just going to like leave it in there and let it do what it does. And then I got my other ones, which has a thousand or so. Not a thousand is at like 
25 or something like that. I don't know, some crazy amount like that. But um, I'm still buying more and more Baby Doge. I just got paid today. But like I said, I, I have not gotten the opportunity to buy. I literally just like got home from the gym after a 10-hour day at work and a whole two-hour session at the gym. And then now a whole 30-minute Baby Doge video. This is probably like 20 minutes, but probably going to end it a little bit early because I'm getting tired. But anyways, going over this right here, we are doing a lot more burns as well as the volume comes in to Baby Doge. So right now we have 158.5 quadrillion circling supply. And I explained this a lot, but I'll explain it again. Money came, like people are wondering why did we have 159 quadrillion, but we burned 4.8 quadrillion and we only have 158 now. It's because money came from the deployer, money came from the liquidity. The reason they did that is because the Baby Doge developers aren't just some some rich people i mean they probably are rich they probably have some good amount of money off of baby doge but it's not like they're just gonna take all their money and then throw it into the burn wallet like no like there are people too that need to live and need to create financial freedom like the developers are also trying to be financially free as well as well as all of us so they're not they're not just gonna take their own money and burn it so what they do is they take the money from the deployer they take the baby doge coins from the deployer and then they take the baby doge coins from the liquidity and they just boom, they burn it. And it's not taking out of their pockets, it's taking out of the pockets of everyone that put into baby doge, including us, like us and them. They put they bought baby doge and doing that, money went to the liquidity. And also they had the deployer as well. So it's like it's not like they're just throwing their money in there. No, they're throwing some of the liquidity, they're throwing some of the deployer money in there. That's what that stuff is for. So yeah, anyways, I just had to explain that because a lot of people have been asking. They're like, man, why are they getting rid of the liquidity? They're not. As people sell, we get more liquidity. 5% of every transaction is going into the liquidity. That's why 5% goes into the liquidity. So then we can do the manual burns. Yes, the automatic burns are cool, but the manual burns only happens if that liquidity tax is collected and burned. So that's just pretty much how it goes. And it also helps so then people aren't just going to do like a rug pull on Baby Doge. But Baby Doge can't be rug pulled. It's just impossible. It's literally financially impossible for Baby Doge to get rug pulled because of the tokenomics. That's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But in my personal opinion, I don't think it's, you know, rug pullable. But yeah, anyways, that was just kind of a little rant right there. But let's talk about the trillions that we burned today. 12.73 trillion Baby Doge burned today. That's a lot of money. Um, I guess we can do the math here. But um, let's, yeah, let's let's just do that math. 12.73. Or, well, I shouldn't even put that point. So 12.73 and then trillion. So I think that's trillion, right? Million, billion, trillion. So that's trillion right there. So let's multiply that by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 and Z, 4, 0. Or really 395 because that's where we're at now. So yeah, that's about $50,000 worth of Baby Doge burned today. That's pretty good. That's coming out of everyone's money, and it's all getting burned. So that's pretty good that we got that burned. That money will never be sent or seen ever again. That money can never be taken out ever again. All this money that the United States is printing into the economy, we're doing our part by burning it and literally trashing it inside of thin air because they create it out of thin air. So why not we just burn it out of thin air, right? But anyways... 3,017 or 3,107, I don't know, 3,170 holders. I don't know why I just now stuttered there. I told you I'm really tired right now. But yeah, 3.7K holders. I don't know why I didn't just say that, 3.17. See, I'm, I'm just messing up all sorts left and right. So I'm, I'm probably going to end this video now because I'm starting to like fall asleep here and just starting to say the wrong thing. But anyways, 10.78 trillion bought here. 3.85 trillion bought there. And we're still seeing sales, but we're seeing far more buys and larger and significant more buys than sales. The, I mean, we're just going to keep getting more people buying into Baby Doge. I just like watching these whales because it really shows how much money is flowing through Baby Doge. But yeah, anyways, this is pretty much all I got for you all today. I just wanted to go over all this, give all the different scenarios of what we can do here with the prices. So yeah, if you like the video, Definitely hit the like button, subscribe. It really helps the YouTube channel a lot immensely for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you all want me to go over next. And also, if you want these automated trading indicators, definitely check out the Vital Algo link in the description and use the discount code of Marcellus for 25% off. And also, if you want to help support the channel, 
definitely go ahead and send a donation through the Cash App or PayPal donation link in the description. And as always, I'll be back with another video. Peace.